big gun what's the best way to lock in, in into these rates and there are a whole lot of instruments available out there for everyone to invest in you know from rbi direct to debt mutual funds to fixed deposits just give us what's your overall recommendation on the products that our listeners should be looking at now so uh I I always say that you should diversify your portfolio. So I'll never say don't invest in bank entry, uh, because that does give you a little of safety and uh, guaranteed returns kind of product. <clears throat> uh, directly owning bonds for uh, investors uh, that's somewhat tricky because uh, most of the bonds uh, bond pricing you don't understand. So unless you can actually get down on a on a sheet and calculate the yield you are buying it at. uh you should not delve into that too much unless you are pretty sure of what you are doing also on the exchange uh the bonds trade on a dirty price basis now again i don't want to explain clean no, price no no you should, you should you should because that's <laughs> okay. an important one for our <laughs> okay. listeners i like the term dirty price <laughs> okay. so it's, it's 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 a very important concept of me so yeah, yeah, just so. just give us a short explanation to our listeners what's a dirty price and what's a clean price okay so clean price is uh, okay the price of a bond uh, which generally traded in the wholesale market okay so dirty price is just because every bond has a coupon so as the uh, as, uh, as the day become uh, as, as the maturity increases to the next coupon there is always accumulation of what we call the accrual of interest rate happens on a daily basis so for example if you have a annual coupon of 8% then after 6 months you have accumulated 4% coupon Correct. so let's say the price of the bond uh, the, say let's say uh clean price is 100 rupees and uh, the bond uh, is 6 months near the next coupon date so 4 rupees is accumulated as a uh, accrued coupon what we call a accrual yeah so when you talk about dirty price the dirty price is 100 plus 4 so it is 104 that is what actually you pay if somebody sells because you will be getting the coupon in the future so you actually pay him for the accrual which has already happened so that is a dirty price and on the exchange it trades on dirty price so actually when you do the bond mathematics uh, you need to uh, when you do the final calculation you need to remove the dirty price so i think all this put thing put together you should know that uh, in an xrr calculation actually you use a dirty price when you use the clean price you have to add back the coupon yeah. and uh, or the accrual and then calculate the uh, dirty price and do the calculation yeah. so folks th- this is important okay <laughs> so i you know go back and listen to what abhi said because pe- i know that the rpi has um given the retail direct platform for investors i know that i signed up when it came out and i'm really excited by it but bond pricing is tricky it's not like stock market and you call up your broker you see on cnbc and the price that you see the price that you get the dirty price and clean price concept are very important because they decide the cost of what you are buying on that rbi retail direct platform and believe me if you don't have those concepts crystal clear please you know just reconsider that please yeah, go so, I mean, sorry please go on so another uh, another tricky point which is there in bonds uh, corporate bonds per se because uh, government bonds that's not there is uh, uh what we call the closing period 15 days before uh, you it goes uh, this and sometimes on exchange it may keep trading at the same price but you will not get the coupon so actually you lose out a lot so yeah. all these things uh, you need to keep in mind when you are trading in bonds so i would suggest that unless you are pretty familiar with bond pricing you should not directly buy from exchanges second is liquidity on the exchange the bid ask itself kills you actually yeah. Yeah. and you pay yeah. brokerage on that if you pay 1% brokerage on your bond you have like you are out 20 basis points so actually you should not buy you can buy in uh, primary markets and you can buy and keep uh, for buy uh, to held to maturity kind you want to hold till maturity that is that is the option you can take uh, and then mutual funds uh, obviously uh, are the best uh, uh, not because i am working there but uh, uh, it's a very simple product like right? you don't worry about uh, all the calculations we do them for the them for the investors and you just look at the nav nav to nav what the return you get is what the return you get so there is no complication mm. and you can redeem on t plus 1 basis any point of time you can invest on t plus 1 basis any point of time uh, some funds will have some lock in exit periods but oh. uh, it's not all of them and uh, i think in terms of uh, funds it depends on your investment horizon like if you let's say for example you have money lying in savings fund earning 3% you can put in liquid fund right now and earn 6% or 6 and a half depending on the market conditions and you can withdraw money on t t plus 1 basis so 
short term you can put money there then there are short term funds there are corporate bond funds uh, and then there are banking psu debt kind of funds uh, which are typically for 2 years 3 years kind of maturity holding but now because there is no tax benefit you can hold for as long as you want as you want you want your money or sometimes you can take a, a market call also for for example if we believe that in next one year rates are going to come down uh you can invest now in uh, mid duration funds or long duration funds and if that prognosis comes correct you could also make a good capital gains and then you can exit after one one and a half two years 